What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. You know, Hearthstone definitely has one of the shortest competitive seasons of any competitive game really, and so getting from rank 16 or higher to Legend in just a month is not only a huge time commitment, but it can also be a frustrating struggle. So while each deck in Hearthstone plays differently and there's tons of different interactions and matchups that you can prepare for, there are definitely a few broader gameplay concepts and tricks that can improve your game by quite a lot. And so today we're going to be breaking down a couple of things that you can do to up your game and maximize your win percentage and is something that legend players love to abuse to climb the ladder. So if you guys enjoyed the video definitely hit that like button and let's begin. So the first thing, let's talk about having a game plan. So this is a fairly common concept in pretty much any strategic card or board game. And in Hearthstone, this essentially comes down to making decisions, having, making sure you're considering all of the information that's available or potentially possible, rather than just making the best play that immediately appears on the board. Your goal isn't gonna be to make great trades, play as many cards as you can, you know, your goal is to win the game. You know, sure, making good trades and playing the board coincides with winning a lot of the time, but there are definitely times when the best play on the board isn't the best play in the long run, and that's why at all times during a game of Hearthstone, you definitely wanna always be thinking, you know, what's my plan for winning this game? You know, how am I gonna win this game? What's my win condition? And definitely try your best to play with that end goal in sight. You know, an example thought process of that might be something like, you know, say you're playing Control Warrior against a Ramp Druid. You know, the best play each turn might be to keep removing all of your opponent's threats, take little risks. But if we keep trading one for one card, he's just going to end up having more threats than me and eventually win in the long run 20 turns down the line. So it looks like I need to take a riskier line of play and try to get the kill in with the combo of Alex Straza and Grom because that's my win condition. That's how I'm going to win the game. This is what I need to do. I need to just play it eventually. And so I'll play Alex Straza as soon as possible because you're thinking about how to win. And when you're thinking about how to win in the long run, like multiple, multiple turns ahead, the control warrior kind of avoids playing to the board and killing threats. He plays with a long goal in mind because he realizes that he can't just win the game like that. You know, players almost never have this problem with combo decks though. They kind of just realize, oh, I just need to survive and find my combo pieces so I can win. But you definitely want to apply this thought process to pretty much every deck you play, except for non-combo decks really. You know, for non-combo decks, your way of winning is going to be a lot more nuanced, involving like incremental small advantages over time that you build up and get a nice big board presence or maybe you end up going to fatigue for lethal. Either way though, definitely always be thinking about how your deck has the best chance to win and always try to play to set that up because definitely thinking about how to win is always going to immediately improve your gameplay. Next up, let's talk about playing to win or playing to your outs as it's called. And this is another fairly basic concept and it's a pretty closely related to having a game plan in general, but does go a little bit more in depth. So essentially the idea here is that you really want to avoid making plays that are just gonna let you survive another turn, but still end up leading to a loss. And instead be willing to make plays that are a lot more risky, but can potentially end up with you winning the game. Now, this isn't to say that you should always play Hearthstone in super risky ways. You know, being conservative definitely has its benefits, but especially when you're behind, it's definitely better to take huge risks if your only other option is losing anyway. I mean, let's look at an example. Say you're playing maybe Freeze Mage against a Control Warrior. Your opponent's at six life, Maybe they have lethal next turn, you have 9 mana, and in your hand is Blizzard and Acolyte of Pain. Your deck has 10 cards left in it, with your only burn remaining being one of each Frostbolt, Ice Lance, and Fireball. So on the surface, the logical play might seem to be play the Blizzard, prevent yourself from dying, and then play the Acolyte of Pain to draw more cards, or maybe ping your opponent. However, when you stop and think about it, this is actually not that good of a play, and it's definitely not going to end up with you winning in the long run. You know, Control Warrior has a ton of ways to armor up, and even if they only use their hero power for armor, there's a very high chance that you don't draw into your burn in time to kill them and you just kind of lose the game. So the winning play in this situation is actually to just ping your own acolyte and hope to draw your fireball. And sure, there's only a 1 in 10 chance of you drawing your fireball, and although things like maybe Frost Nova or Ice Block might help you survive as well, that 10% chance is still a better chance to win than if you just played Blizzard and passed the turn and gave your opponent chances to heal up, armor up, until you finally drew your burn and at that point it just wasn't enough 
enough anymore. And so this is the exact concept we're trying to demonstrate here because although something might be like the best play to make you not lose, it's not always necessarily the best play to make you win in the long run. And if you don't play to win at the end of the day, you know, you don't have your game plan, you're kind of just going to end up throwing away a ton of games actually that you potentially could end up winning because you just didn't want to take the risk there. And definitely you want to be more conscious of these things and those kind of things, if you can always keep those in mind, are going to improve your win percentages immediately. Next up, let's talk a little bit about research and matchup knowledge in general. So of course it would take way too long to go through every matchup and explain all the ins and outs, but we can definitely give some advice on generally just how to go about that yourself. You know, one of the most important things when it comes to matchups and just knowing matchups and knowing how to play against certain matchups is definitely experience. You know, you can read as many tips as you want on what to do in certain matchups and certain things, but a lot like how it is kind of in like math almost, you know, understanding why a formula works is way more important than actually being able to apply and use this sort of formula in the first place. You know, we can tell new players, you know, don't coin two drops out if you don't have a follow-up, but it's way more important for you to understand why it's important to curve out, why it's important to use your mana efficiently than it is for you to just blindly follow a bunch of rules and guidelines for certain scenarios. You know, rules like that result from understanding and game knowledge in general. And once you have those things, you understand why the rules are in place and also when it's okay for you to break them. So for those of you maybe newer or more casual players looking to accumulate that matchup, that game knowledge without tons of grinding, well, you're definitely going to need some time investment for sure if you do want to get better at the game, but there are ways to get that experience that are much more efficient than others actually. So one thing that you can do is play with a friend or maybe just play casual mode or honestly just ranked if you're willing to lose ranks and then try a bunch of new things when you play your decks. You know, for example, try being really aggressive in one game. In another game, try being really controlling or conservative. Try playing different play styles from how you usually play and making different decisions that you wouldn't otherwise make. You know, try different interactions and different matchups and keep track of what works and what doesn't. And experimenting a ton like this might of course definitely lead to a lot of losses at first, but it's a great way to learn interactions and what mistakes you're making in certain matchups. Another thing you can definitely do is take a look at matchup tables that a pro or content creation site might have made. You know, for example, the Temple Storm Meta Snapshot is a great resource. And potentially, you can see how theoretical win, win rates compare to yours. You know, for example, if the Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior percentage is 10 to 90 and your win percentage is 8 to 92, that's probably just variance. But if their Druid versus Handlock percentage is 70 to 30 and you're only winning that matchup 40% of the time, clearly you're doing something wrong and you should be doing more research on how to play that particular matchup. It's actually pretty usual for new players to be kind of good at some matchups because they accidentally are doing the right things, but can potentially be terrible at other things. So the sooner people recognize what matchups they're doing poorly in, the easier it is to improve your knowledge and cultivate good gameplay habits. You know, improving your matchups in Hearthstone definitely takes a while, but by trying new things and evaluating your own performance, you can definitely get much better much faster. So what are some tips and tricks that helped you climb the ladder? Definitely let us know in the comments below. And either way, looks like that's gonna be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.